Good afternoon to one and all. I am Mary Vic Ditenedo. My present affiliation is at Perpetual Health College of Manila, where I oversee the operation of two departments, the Senior High School and the College of Arts and Sciences. And I am also an assistant professor at the University of Santo Tomas. Uh, we would like to thank Vibal for this uh, webinar series, especially hosted during this time of pandemic. This academic undertaking makes our quarantine time spent insightfully and productively. Again, thank you very much Vibal for having this uh, webinar series. Our topic for today is quite timely since uh, we were we are permitted from reporting to our school, to our regular classes. And uh, we should be given some insights how this platform works. And I hope from the points I was able to gather, this would shed light to some uh, to some problems that we have encountered or that we will be encountering relative to uh, e-learning platform. Once upon a time, the role of the educator was to prepare students for the specific task they would be required to complete. Communities were also much more homogeneous and so specific values and cultures needed to be transmitted and practiced to ensure the survival of these beliefs. Nowadays, we don't live in the same world. Society is a mix of many different beliefs and cultures. Globalization has opened up the world and allowed people to connect in new and exciting ways. We blend traditions and create unique belief systems that are not taught in any classroom but are developed through our life experiences and passions. Students in the 21st century learn in a global classroom and it's not necessarily within four walls. They are more inclined to find information by accessing the internet through cell phones and computers or chatting with friends on a social networking site. Similarly, Many teachers are monitoring and issuing assignments via virtual classrooms. Despite these changes, the essence of education's role has not changed. As always, at its core, the role of education is to prepare students to become active, successful, and productive members of society. However, there has been an important change that must be considered. Society has changed. We cannot adequately prepare students for the society that exists today or will exist tomorrow if we continue to prepare them for the society that existed yesterday. In order to prepare students to play the role in the 21st century society, we are part of a few things need to be considered when deciding how education will look in our schools and classrooms. First, instruction should be student-centered. The days of lecturing teachers has passed, though not entirely. It means that the main source of knowledge in the classroom should not be the teacher alone. Education is no longer about listening to the teacher talk and absorbing the information. In this classroom model, the teacher would act as a facilitator for the students. Instead of possibly receiving information, the students would gather information on their own under the guidance of their teacher. Second, education should be collaborative. Students must learn how to collaborate with others. Society today has people collaborating across the globe. 
The internet, which has enabled instant global communication and access to information, likewise holds the key to enacting a new educational system where students use information at their fingertips and work in teams to accomplish more than what one individual can alone, mirroring the 21st century workplace. Third, learning should have context. A student center does not mean that the teacher gives up all the control of the classroom. While students are encouraged to learn in different ways, the teacher still provides guidance as to the skills that need to be acquired. The teacher can make a point of helping students to understand how the skills they are building can be applied in their lives. Students will be much more motivated to learn something that they can see the value in. Fourth, schools should be integrated with society. In order to prepare students to become responsible citizens, we need to model what a responsible citizen is. With the powers of technology and the internet, students of today can do even more. Our community is no longer just the area of space located around the school, but reaches out and envelopes the world. So what is in store for us in today's discussion? Our topic for today is very timely since we are not given the opportunity to meet our classes in school. So here is the roadmap of my presentation and uh, presentation relative to developing self-paced learning uh, topics for digital content. First, we'll talk about learner's trends and I'll be considering some researches relative to the input to the learner trends. Second, we will be checking some e-learning approaches. And the third, we'll get insights on some LMS digital content. And fourth, select the best LMS for our organization. Filipino culture places high value on education. For the majority of the Filipinos, the only best thing for a child to acquire and secure a better future is through education. So they want more effective education system. E-learning is still an emerging market in the Philippines. Its use is still sporadic and most users represent only a small segment of the Philippine education and even business communities. Modern education is more immersive, interesting, personalized, and accessible for both students and teachers. It is more relevant to students' needs, learning preferences, and expectations. The trends in online teaching will boost the student creativity and engagement even more than before. What are the technologies that will have the greatest impact on e-learning in the near future? There's no doubt that artificial intelligence will change all aspects of people's lives and education is no exception. The rapid development in AI or artificial intelligence is improving the possibilities of offering a more personalized education. The implementation of virtual reality and augmented reality are becoming an important part of the immersive learning experience. Other new tools are becoming more effective at creating a fulfilling learning experience, not only in schools, but also for corporate learning and development training. Now, a group of researchers, researchers from Digital Marketing Philippines conducted a research on the state of digital users in the Philippines in order to appreciate Philippine remote education environment. And this research yielded the following results. Mm -hmm. 
There are 69 million internet Filipino users. That's, that's quite a big number. Average Filipino online users visit the internet 21.5 hours a week. Digital marketing continues to expand as the number of Filipinos who chooses digital media over traditional channels increases. And the most salient findings is e-learning is an emerging market in the Philippines. Another study was also conducted to spell out the trends in online teaching in 2020 and beyond. And what are the top five trends in online teaching for 2020 and beyond? Here are the top five trends in online teaching. First, personalized learning. Second, the evolution of the LMS to LXS. Third, accessibility and hybrid homeschooling. Fourth, self-directed learning. And the fifth is the transformed role of online teachers in the Internet of Things. Now, what is personalized learning? One of the trends in education from last year that will continue to grow in this year is a more personalized learning experience for students. The popular understanding of this method is for an individualized teaching approach that is adjusted to the individual needs of every student. However, with today's new technologies, online teaching offers an even more personalized learning experience that corresponds to a student's interests, strengths, needs, and struggles. Teacher can easily implement various tools to differentiate their teaching techniques including video lessons, augmented reality, virtual reality, interactive games in the virtual classroom. Personalized learning is flexible and an extremely effective approach in modern education. The second trend is the evolution of the learning management system or LMS the Learning Experience System, or the LXS. The trend for personalized learning is tightly connected to the evolution of the LMS into the LXS. The goal is to provide the most fulfilling experience for students and teachers by providing all tools, data, and content to the participant in a very accessible way. The implementation of AI offers a wide range of possibilities for self-training and more curated learning programs through a better understanding of student learning patterns and interests. The integration of the LXP into online teaching is a powerful content provider with the ability to include all kinds of content like video, podcasts, in an interactive environment with individualized recommendations. The LXP is expected to encourage self-driven learning and the engagement of students of all ages. Third trends, accessibility and hybrid homeschooling. One of the biggest advantages of e-learning is accessibility. We might be having a very good platform, online platform, if the students and teachers are not able to access it, it's futile. The latest technologies take the accessibility of online platforms and courses to the next level by bringing them to various devices and including a wide range of features for different learning types. 
This improved accessibility provides a more personalized learning experience for students and more effective online teaching methods for teachers. Among the growing trends in the US is hybrid homeschooling that more and more families are choosing for their children. Modern learning management systems provide options for students to enroll in classes in virtual classrooms and experience peer-to-peer -peer interaction and teaching similar to traditional classrooms and schools. Hybrid homeschooling is possible thanks to these accessible online learning platforms that allow for both study lessons at home and online classes taught by professional mentors or teachers. Fourth is the self, fourth trend is the self-directed learning. More and more online learning programs are designed to encourage self-directed learning. What does this mean? Students will have more access than ever before to the content and resources of their classes. The advanced AI and modern learning LMX platforms will make personalized recommendations and provide selected content related to student interests and learning habits. There are online programs entirely based on self-paced studying. The online teaching in these types of courses is in the form of consultations, monitoring, and assessment. The growing trend in online learning in the corporate training field is micro-learning. It is based on user autonomy, studying with bite-sized lessons that continue between two and seven minutes. The implementation of this method in corporate training programs is proving to be effective. Therefore, the expectations for the next few years are for a wider implementation of the micro learning approach in many different industries, including education. The last of these trends underscored in this research is the transformed role of online teachers and the internet of things. Today's online teachers nurture learners and coach them during the study process. Teachers monitor the progress of the class and help when needed. The connection of devices or that internet of things has a strong impact on every aspect of people's lives, including education. Mobile accessibility delivers information and content to a student's fingertips and provides teachers with the ability to create extraordinary smart lessons. The new technology of the internet of things makes it easier for teachers to interact with students, student parents, to make assessments and reports, and monitor the progress of every student easier than ever. Each lesson is more effective, interesting, engaging, and motivating. Now, why do we have to develop e-learning? Uh, developing e-learning is more expensive. Definitely, it's very expensive than preparing classroom materials and training trainers, especially if multimedia or highly interactive methods are used. However, deliver costs for e-learning, which includes cost of web servers and technical support, are considerably lower than those of the classroom facilities, instructor, participants travel, and job time loss to attend classroom sessions. E-learning is a good option when there is a significant amount of content to be delivered to a large number of learners. It is a good option 
when learners are highly motivated to learn and appreciate proceeding at their own pace. Third, learners come from geographically dispersed locations. Fourth, learners have limited mobility, like in our present condition, our present scenario, uh, brought by the pandemic, we are not given the opportunity to report to our classes. So this is uh, when e-learning is considered our best option for today. Next is e-learning is a good option when learners are required to develop homogeneous uh, background knowledge on the topic. Six, content must be re reused for different learners or in groups in the future. The course addresses long-term rather than short-term training needs. And number eight, there is a need to collect and track data. So when we use an e-learning platform, normally the students' activities outputs are normally stored and teachers are able to track the data or tracking the, the progress of the students, considering those stored uh, activities uh, of the students. Now, let's proceed now to some e-learning approaches. As regards uh, e-learning approaches, we, are, we were able to identify two kinds. That is self-paced e-learning and instruct, instructor-led e-learning. So when we speak of instructor-led e-learning, learners are, I'm sorry, self-paced e-learning first. For self-paced e-learning, learners are offered e-learning courseware, also called uh, the WBT or the web-based training, which can be complemented by supplemental resources and assessments. So students are able to access on these materials at the time of their convenience. The second approach is the instructor-led and facilitated e-learning. Learners, facilitators, and instructors can use communication tools such as emails, discussion forums, chats, polls, whiteboards, application sharing, and audio and video conferencing to communicate and work together. So it's real time. So if it is instructor-led and facilitated the learning, it's real time. This is synchronous, so everyone has to uh, access a particular lesson or a particular activity at a given time. And there is always an opportunity for the teacher to communicate with the student and the student to the teachers. What kind of materials can we upload or export? So always when we are given the platform, uh, we would always be thinking what kind of materials should, are we allowed to export or to upload in our platform. First, we can have the simple learning resources. It could be interactive e-lessons. It could be electronic simulations. Or it could be job aids. So what is simple learning resources? Simple learning resources are non-interactive resources such as documents, PowerPoint presentations, video or audio files. These materials are non-interactive in the sense that learners can, can only read or watch content without performing any other action. These resources can be quickly developed and when they match defined learning objectives, and are designed in a structured way, they can be a valuable learning resource even though they don't provide any interactivity. Another e-learning content which we can upload 
is interactive e-lessons. The most common approach for self-paced e-learning is WBT or web-based training consisting of a set of interactive e-lessons. An e-lesson is a linear sequence of screens which can include texts, graphics, animations, audio, video, and interactivity in the form of questions and feedback. E-lessons can also include recommended reading and links to online resources, as well as additional information on specific topics. The most powerful tool that you have at your disposal when developing an interactive e-learning strategy is reality-based e-learning scenarios. Integrating real-life examples and problems into your e-learning course will give you the chance to draw in the learners and show them firsthand how knowledge acquired can be applied outside of the learning environment. Uh, for example, if you design a scenario that allows the learners to tap into the skills they have learned during the e-learning course, such as technical problem solving or customer service, they gain invaluable experience that can be used on the job later because they, they get to see connection of what they are doing and then its application in the real world in the future. Making these scenarios interactive by including video, images, and audio enables you to create an immersive and effective learning environment that motivates and engages the learners. The third e-learning content which we can deploy or upload are simulations, electronic simulations. Simulations are highly interactive forms of e-learning. The term simulation basically means creating a learning environment that simulates the real world, allowing the learner to learn by doing. Simulations are a specific form of web-based training that immerse the learner in a real-world situation and respond in a dynamic way. Simulations in e-learning mimic the environment and conditions of real life to allow learners explore, learn, and practice, thus preparing them for on-the-job tasks they are likely to encounter. They provide learners a risk-free platform to practice and lead to a reduction in the overall training time and costs. Not to mention the costly repercussions associated with tasks that go haywire. E-learning simulations can be developed in three modes or a combination of these three modes, which are watch simulation, try simulation, and do simulation. So what is watch simulation? In a watch simulation, teachers are shown how to perform a particular action within a software step-by-step. -step. Try simulation, the learners will be asked to try executing the task with hints being provided us and when necessary. In a do simulation, Learners will be asked to do the task without any assistance. Another e-learning content are job aids. Job aids provide just-in-time knowledge. They can take several forms and be delivered on different platforms like computer, printed document, mobile phone. They usually provide immediate answers to specific questions, thus helping users accomplish job tasks. Technical glossaries and checklists are a few examples of simple job aids, but sophisticated expert systems can also be developed to assist uh, workers in a complex decision making. How can e-learning tools help create job aids? In the current information age, several organizations are opting for paperless work environment. Instructional designers need to work closely with front learners. 
designers need to work closely with frontline managers to create a particular job aid. Extra care is needed for tasks that require judgment. E-learning developers can enact tasks through scenarios in a brief manner to encourage the desirable judgment for a step requiring it. Also, e-learning tools can serve better when creating self-assessment procedures to double check if the performance is at the appropriate level. E-learning tools can easily be used to create several formats of job aids. This includes steps or procedures, worksheets, arrays, decision tables, flowcharts, checklists, and combinations of any of the formats. The best part is the e-learning tools make the job aids completely interactive. Now, what are the benefits of self-paced learning? So we were able to identify, based on my research, I was able to identify, we were able to identify five benefits of self-paced e-learning. Uh, probably those who are into online platforms at this point in time when quarantine was, was implemented, okay, we were all uh, encouraged by our, our managers, school managers to consider online platforms so that we get to deliver our deliverables to our students. And uh, since uh, students and even teachers find it hard to connect due to some uh, challenges relative to connection, I think self-paced e-learning is best to be considered. So what are the five benefits of self-paced e-learning? First, the first one is it offers a flexible, engaged learning culture. In live training, instructors must teach according to the capabilities of the majority of students. These often means individuals who already have a solid grounding in the material field of course. Other is progressing too slowly, while some others might be lost and need more time to explore basic concepts. Having access to lessons on demand makes it possible for all students to learn at their own speed. According to a study published in the Journal of Memory and Language, pacing yourself may also mean retaining more of what you learn. This research looked at how successful subjects were at learning while under time constraints, as opposed to when they were able to control their own study time. When learners took advantage of additional time to focus on more difficult items, they performed significantly better than those who had to obey a time limit. Having access to lessons on demand results in more opportunities to explore key concepts before an exam. Afterward, your online student participants have the flexibility to discover where they made mistakes before moving on to the next unit. Second benefit, a scalable revenue generating learning model. Delivering micro courses in highly focused digestible chunks resonates with learners who look to Google and YouTube when they want to learn a new skill. This model is ideal for online training participants who prefer independent study as they can access these courses on demand anytime and anywhere with an internet connection. Third benefit, it is uh, a cost-effective, convenient, self-paced environment. When an organization hires a trainer to come to their business to speak or teach on a particular subject, there are certain costs associated with the training, right? Moreover, if an employer instead elects to send uh, their employees off 
or training to a conference, they face even higher costs. With on-demand online training solutions, no one needs to come to you or go somewhere else. Your audience has access to video content from world-renowned experts at a fraction of the cost of traditional learning methods. Subscription-based online training courses can eliminate time and costs related to travel while also providing the best learning experiences for online training participants. Another benefit is remote and mobile connectivity for learning on the go. Ito yata ang uso ngayon. Kahit anong ginagawa mo, pwede mong ma-access, yung gusto mong i-access in the net. According to Top 20 e-learning statistics for 2019, you need to know the old image of e-learning where a student or employee sits at the computer terminal, clicking boxes, is slowly fading away. Digital training courses are designed in general to provide intuitive navigation. So online training participants can concentrate more on the course materials and less on the destruction of cumbersome navigation. The online training courses must work seamlessly in the medium the online learner prefers, whether it's a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. Another, the last of the five benefits of self-paced e-learning, curated content to meet the needs of every student. Offering self-paced online learning is key to empowering your online learners with access to easily digestible content anytime, anywhere. This flexibility offers online training professionals a new universe of opportunities to deliver continuing education and online training programs that align with the needs of today's learners. The on-demand economy is here to stay and technology will continue to offer new possibilities for training and education programs. In addition to serving as a strong retention and engagement tool, on-demand continuing education offers a strategic advantage to learners who have limited time. Implementing a multi-tiered on-demand digital training program is a proven way to address the need for continuing education in a critical situation just like this pandemic. Okay, so at uh, this juncture, let's try to consider some LMS overview. The role of a learning management system varies depending on the organization's objectives, online training strategy, and desired outcomes. However, the most common use for LMS software is to deploy and track online training initiatives. Typically, assets are uploaded. Assets would mean your, your materials, your resources, are uploaded to the learning management system, which makes them easily accessible for remote learners. In some cases, the LMS may even have built-in e-learning authoring tools that allow you to develop online training materials without additional third-party software. Think of a learning management system as the vast repository where you can store and track information. It's, it's, it's just like a library which houses a big volumes of books. Anyone with a login and password can access these online training resources whenever and wherever. For self-hosted learning management systems, users must also have the LMS software installed on their hard drive or access to the company server, 
whatever the installation option, the thing to bear in mind is that LMS users fall into two categories. First, online learners who use the learning management system to participate in online classes. And second, your e-learning team who relies on the LMS platform to disperse information and update the online training content. How do we deploy our learning resources? So deployment is either cloud-based, it could be uh, self-hosted, it could be through desktop application, or probably a mobile application. So what is cloud-based? When we speak of cloud-based, S-A-A-S stands for service as a software model. You know, the, the challenge of technology is, the language of technology today is it's characterized by shortcuts, right? So it's best, although in our time as teachers, during our time, it's a cardinal sin to every VA. But today, we better appreciate terminologies, especially for technology, if it is short, uh, making use of shortcuts. Okay, so uh, like LMS, LMX, SASS, and so on and so forth. So what is cloud-based deployment? Perhaps the most popular model for an LMS is the service as the software model. So that's SAS, service as a software model. It's a ready out of the box solution that is easy to deploy. Usually it's cloud-based and includes frequent free upgrades. While it can be somewhat limited in customization because it's readily available, an SAS LMS or a cloud-based LMS is perfect for the organization that's growing, it's scalable over time because it's growing scalable over time. Technical support is generally included for the entire use period. These LMS platforms are hosted on the cloud. That's why the term is cloud-based. The LMS vendors, the LMS vendor maintains the systems, the system and carries out any technical upgrades or updates. Online learners and collaborators log in to the learning management system with a username and password. There's no need to install any software, which makes it a great option for organizations who want to get started as soon as possible. The downside is that some cloud-based learning management systems cannot be customized. For example, there are fewer opportunities to incorporate our branding or personalizing uh, activity relative to its dashboard. The second option for, you, for our LMS deployment is self-hosted. Learning management systems that require software downloads, uh, the LMS vendor may offer direct download from their site or you must request physical software disks. Sometimes it, it comes with a disk. However, the former is more common these days. Self-hosted LMS platforms allow for greater creative control and customization. That is the disadvantage is that you usually have to pay for updates and the system may require IT know-how. The third deployment option is desktop application. The LMS app is installed on the desktop. Some desktop apps are even accessible on multiple devices, making it easy for your entire e-learning team to collaborate. 
And the last is mobile application. Learning management systems that are accessible whenever, wherever via mobile devices. You can upload online lessons so that online learners can track online activities on the go. So madali to kahit saan, ang mga bata, wherever they are, or even the teachers, they can make some instruction about their online activity unless it is supported by applications. So with that, let's now proceed to the types of content that can be uploaded into your learning management system. I was able to consider five uh, types of content which are off the shelf, recorded webinars, recorded face-to-face -face training, outsourced bespoke e-learning, and create e-learning internally. What is off the shelf? Off the shelf. Okay, off the shelf. Actually, this list, the, the, the list is organized. The list of this uh, type of contents that we can upload in our LMS is organized in order of implementation speed, beginning with the quickest. So we have the off the shelf what are off-the-shelf uh, content. Off-the-shelf off the shelf training is a great way to deliver high quality content to your learners. The courses are usually developed to a high standard and are very quick and easy to implement. You just have to download from the vendor site, then upload to your LMS, test, and launch. These types of course can be quite expensive depending on the topic. And if you are delivering these our volume, you may want to look for a bulk purchase offer. One of the most famous libraries is Open Sesame. Although you will find many more for more specialist subjects, just search Google with the keywords e-learning plus marketplace plus your topic to find exactly what you're looking for. It may save you thousands of pesos and hours of wasted time trying to build a course yourself when something else suitable is already out there. The second is the second content which you can upload is uh, recorded webinars. If you're currently delivering training or product demonstrations by webinar, you can record the sessions and upload this as video files to the LMS. So most webinar platforms have the functionality to record events. And if you ensure the presenter uses a good quality microphone, the final production can be very good. Once you have the final webinar recorded, you have the option to upload it immediately to the LMS. However, you can drastically improve the user experience by chunking the webinar down into smaller bite-sized modules. For example, if you have an hour-long web experience, why not break the content into 12 times 15 minute videos? To add an element of interactivity for recorded webinars, you could also add some quiz, questions at the end of each module using the LMS assessment and functionality. While this may not be the purest and most effective form of online training, you can create very useful content in a short amount of time. The third, uh, the third content, a third type of content that we can consider is recorded face-to-face -face training. Another quick way to create content without large, large investment of time is rec record live training events. One example of this technique being successfully used was with a company induction, which had previously only ever been delivered in a face-to-face -face environment. In order to allow those employees located in satellite offices in remote locations to go through the induction without flying to the head office, 
uh, this organization set up some HD video cameras and recorded the live event. So similarly, we can do that. Similar to the previous example of recording a webinar, it would be good practice to chunk also this recording down into small byte size modules. With some additional development work, you can add some interactive interactivity through these questions at the end of each module. Another type of content is outsourced bespoke, outsourced bespoke e-learning. I'm sorry, okay. I failed to have it click. Number four is outsource bespoke e-learning. What is it all about? Moving on to more time consuming ways of creating content, you can obviously outsource an e-learning course to an external provider who would create the content for you from scratch. An external specialist is is what is is will come is invited and will come and turn your content or ideas into an interactive e-learning course. The advantage of choosing this method of production is that the responsibility of developing the content is out of your hands. The obvious downside to this method is the expenses involved. So you just have to discuss uh, the specs uh, to this invited specialist and they would be able to come up with uh, a package, a program package, which suits the requirement of the organization. The last type of content that can be uploaded is to create e-learning internally. Another obvious way to provide content to your LMS is to build the content yourselves. Actually in our school, uh, when we first uh, introduced our blended learning, uh, the faculty of the senior high school were gathered together and then they were given topics, modules, and the output has been uh, given to our service provided and it has been uploaded to our portal. This is clearly the most time consuming and requires resource from within your company since you have to, you have to spend time uh, gathering all this faculty and then it's expensive because uh, normally when you gather faculty together in, in uh, you, you assemble or you, yeah, you, you assemble faculty, uh, there are always logistic requirements. You will need an instructional designer who can take uh, this material and write a storyboard based around content. You will also need someone with rapid authoring software skills to develop the content into an engaging course. I have often seen companies trying to create e-learning courses themselves using software such as Articulate Storyline and Adobe Captivate, mistakenly thinking that creating a course is similar to creating a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so with this content, content types of content that uh, can be uploaded into our LMS, what will be our next step? If you're looking to implement an LMS at your organization, you may want to think carefully about which of these types of content you plan to add to the LMS and build out a roadmap, which may include one or all of the methods. It is very easy to underestimate the amount of time required to develop an effective piece of content. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that simply by implementing an LMS and e-learning course, all your training problems will be solved. Now, what are the advantages of LMS in the educational setting?
The advantages of LMS in the educational setting are as follows. Teachers can use established pedagogical models to deliver more personalized lessons and increase the engagement level of students. Another advantage of LMS is students respond well to micro learning and the LMS is a perfect platform for facilitating this format of learning. Next, students can learn on their own via computers, laptops, and mobile devices to keep learning alive 24 seven. Next is an LMS increases the flexibility and creativity of the learning materials which enhances the student experience and encourages shared collaboration. Another advantage would be student progression through lessons and assessments becomes more self-driven, tapping into the natural way humans learn. Another advantage, artificial intelligence and automation make administration of learning materials easier for instructors, freeing up their time for other teaching opportunities. So how many advantages were able to underscore? There are five. Now, how do we select the best LMS for our organization? Lalo ngayon, may pandemic. Probably when the next school year will open, uh, relative to our uh, trust as an educational institution, sabi nga ng ating secretary ng DepEd, kahit anong mangyari, matutuloy ang klase. Paano? So we have to consider uh, another approach in realizing our course outcomes. So not just uh, through face-to-face, -face. this time, whether we like it or not, we have to totally embrace technology so that we are able to give to our students uh, our deliverables. So what are, what are the criteria that we have to consider so that uh, we get to select the best LMS for our institution? The smart could be. Okay, so the key criteria to consider when deciding on a new learning management system is first, definitely, it would call for our pedagogical design. So pedagogical design. Knowing that the LMS main charge would be providing content and tools for engaging students and conducting interactive learning, we sought out a platform that integrates well with interactive tools and that allows us to routinely add new pedagogical tools to the system. Another consideration that we have to uh, know is the design and layout. What about the design and layout? We knew that a functional interface with a decent layout would do an okay job but one that allowed for easy navigation with minimal training would be even better. During our research, we set our sights on finding an LMS that had a simple, intuitive interface with minimal clicks to access materials with little or no training needed to get started. Because there are LMS, uh, there are programs which are very complicated. So I think one consideration is we have, it, it should be user-friendly. Another is uh, course export. What about course export? Thus, the LMS allow users to export course structure and content as well as selected sub elements of a course. This important question was on our minds as we review our LMS options, knowing that the solution would be 
most effective when serving as a fully integrated solution for our school. Next, archives. Meron ba siyang archives? Ano ba yung archives? Okay. A good LMS has strong archival tools that support backup of completed courses with student submissions and discussions intact. An excellent match includes archive tools that support automatic backup of completed courses with student submissions and discussions intact. With the latter, instructors have full access and control over these completed courses. So whenever the students perform an activity, is it saved in that particular LMS? Because normally as teachers, we go back right to, to those performed activities so that we better appreciate uh, performances of students. The next consideration is communication. We wanted a platform that include both asynchronous and synchronous communication tools, and that provides a high level of flexibility for the use of email, as well as instant messaging, chat, and threaded discussions. This is intended best as a feedback mechanism to students' performance development. So dapat yung ating LMS should have this feature so that at least students, though they are remotely performing their tasks through the online platform that we have provided to them, they're also given some feedback about their output, about their progress in the class or in the course. Another is uh, file exchange. In today's collaborative educational environment, simple file exchange is a must have. We sought out an LMS that provides secure drop boxes and shared folders for file exchange among students as well as instructors. And that also allows for bulk downloads of attached files. Another feature of a good LMS is uh, sections and groups. The platform had to allow instructors to define subgroups of students within the class rooster for purposes of communication and collaborative work. But we also needed a hierarchy of support sections with a single course. Why do we have to group our students? Remember, our students would always have differing, differing abilities. So when you try to deploy some activities to them, you try to consider where they are good at. And from there, you're able to design uh, an active, a student activity where the students would be able to be uh, given that, uh, that, that particular uh, instructional activities which suits their level and their interest as well. The next one is grade book and student tracking. So we have our platform in our school. This is meant for our college and senior high school students. Normally, whenever a student take a quiz online or submitted activity via online, uh, teachers would create forums or chats. These uh, outputs are recorded. So all, we should be able to select or to choose an LMS that would have this feature. The platform had to include a highly functional grade book that was easy to use and that allowed that is easy to use and that allowed grades to be exported to spreadsheet or student information system. Through the platform, teachers could access student tracking tools to learn, for example, which pages the student has viewed and what tasks have been completed. From there, the student receives an email when his or her participation is not good. Another is discussion tools. To streamline communication, our LMS needed to include extremely fast and highly functional discussion tools, complete with featured user profiles or pictures, file attachment, and 
HTML interface. Another feature of a good LMS is it should bear testing and assessment tools. Our new LMS had to go beyond just simple test generation and provide user-friendly tools for creating assessments with multimedia, learning games, and other interactive tools. Going a step further, the new platform would be able to provide immediate feedback with tips for remediation. Now, with that, uh, I was able to give some insights about the trends relative to e-learning. We were able to consider also uh, the feature of a good digital platform. And with the present pandemic, aside from we are entering into, we are now in the a 21st century education or schooling, online learning is not the next big thing. It is the now big thing. Thank you very much. And uh, we will be entertaining some questions after an intermission number is rendered coming from the BAL group. Okay, how's, how's our participants today? So at this juncture, probably we could have some questions or an intermission presentation from the Bibal. Ayan, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, teachers. Welcome po sa aming live webinar dito po sa YouTube. Uh, bago po ang lahat, allow me to introduce myself. Ako po si Paul, ang head ng brand marketing team ng Vival. So, yung mga nakikita nyo po dyan sa social media and everything, kami po yung nasa likod nun. Ayan, yung team po namin ang nasa likod nyan. So, maraming salamat po sa pagtangkilik sa mga programa ng Vival Online. Um, pangako po namin, syempre, na talagang pap pagpapatuloy pa namin ang mga magagandang programa na in inihahatid namin sa inyo. Uh, para po dun sa mga nag-aabang ng certificates nila, konting pasensya na lang po, kami naman po ay full force na sa Vival, no? Para ma-provide yung inyong mga certificates. Tuloy-tuloy lang po tayo sa pag-hashtag ng hashtag learn as one PH. <laughs> okay, so meron po akong inihandang maikling kanta. Ayan, para po sa ating lahat. Kasi sabi nila, uh, webinar, di ba sa usual seminars, di ba po, meron naman po talaga mga intermission number. So, ito po ang aming handog na intermission number para sa inyo. Ayan, so naisip namin na, syempre, hindi lang naman tayo dapat natututo, dapat na-entertain din tayo sa kabila, syempre, ng crisis na pinagdadaanan natin ngayon. So, sana po ay magustuhan nyo itong aking kanta. Ayan. At uh, muli, salamat po sa, sa pagsama sa amin ngayong hapon. Girl, I'm in love with you This ain't the honeymoon Past the infatuation phase Right in the thick of love Times we get sick of love Seems like we argue every day I know I misbehaved And you made your mistakes And we both still got room left to grow And though love sometimes hurts, I still put you first And we'll make this thing work But I think we should take it slow We're just ordinary people We don't know which way to go Cause we're ordinary people Maybe we should take it slow Take it slow oh, oh, oh. 
This time we'll take it slow Take it slow oh, oh, oh. This time we'll take it slow This ain't a movie love No fairy tale conclusion y'all Gets more confusing every day Sometimes it's heaven sent Then we head back to hell again We kiss then we make up on the way I hang up, you call We rise and we fall And we feel like just walking away It's all of it then Says we take second chances Though it's not a fan To see I still want you to stay We're just all Ordinary people, we don't know which way to go. Cause we're ordinary people. Maybe we should take it slow, take it slow. Oh, oh, oh. this time we'll take it slow, take it slow. Oh, oh, oh. This time we'll take it slow Take it slow Maybe we'll live and learn Maybe we'll crash and burn Maybe you'll stay Maybe you'll leave Maybe you'll return Maybe another fight Maybe we won't survive But maybe we'll grow We'll never know Baby, you and I We're just ordinary people we don't know which way to go Cause we're just ordinary people Baby, we should take it slow Hey, hey We're just ordinary people We don't know which way to go Cause we're ordinary people Maybe we should take it slow, take it slow oh, This time we'll take it slow, take it slow oh, oh, This time we'll take it slow Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po sa pagsama sa amin ngayong hapon at uh, nawa po ay lahat tayo ay ligtas ayan, sa ating mga bahay. Stay safe and stay home at uh, tuloy-tuloy lang po ang pagsuporta sa Viva. From uh, the question is from Lorenzo, Jeff, San Jose. How could we apply e learning in public schools if there is no enough funding? Uh, actually, that is also a problem in the private school. But uh, the Department of Education today has already launched. Uh, online platforms in response to to uh, what is happening in the world today. So with the pandemic, with the Marawi siege, what else? Yung pagkutok ng bulkan sa taal. So students were stopped from reporting physically to school. So this these uh, events had prompted Department of Education to pull the resources together so that uh, they get to offer online platform to public school students. Ngayon yata meron merong nilaunch ang DepEd. Uh, these are online uh, learning, teaching and learning. 
not only uh, these are these are seminar or training given to teachers so that they can be equipped technically in undertaking online teaching. So, uh, kung limitado man yung fund, uh, anje na yan eh. But still, depart the Department of Education is already uh, pulling the resources together so that uh, they would be able to have this online platform given to public schools. Lalo ngayon, they would be compelled to come up with an online platform since when we resume our classes for, when we start, when we commence our uh, classes for the school year 2020-2021, if it would be commenced by uh, September, is it September or August? So definitely, yung social distancing sa classroom is hard to achieve. So probably, maaring enroll tayo, nag-start yung, enroll yung bata, nag-start yung, yung school year, but the students are not reporting in classes. So they will be compelled to really uh, get some funds so that the online instruction for public school is in place, especially during this time. Okay, so another question. Why develop e-learning? Is it a good option in a large number of learners? Definitely, it is a good, a good option. Kasi, isipin mo, sa, let's try to consider uh, a viable class size. Normally, ang class natin would, accom would, would uh, accommodate how many students in a class? 50? And in other sections, it could go to 60. So majority of the classes that we handle are considered big classes. So yung inconvenience which is brought by these big classes in a regular classroom, okay, would be eliminated if students would just be asked to just refer to these uh, learning packages in the cloud. So anywhere they are, they would be able to access uh, that particular uh, lesson without reporting anymore to the class. So pag big ang classes talaga, mas maganda. Kasi kahit saan sila, pwede silang, pwede silang uh, mag-access sa lesson. Okay? Another question is, good afternoon, ma'am. I would like to ask for if it is possible to have one LMS to be used by one particular grade level with all the subjects so that the students will not be confused. Definite, yes, uh, ang, ang LMS naman ng isang school ay isa lang, right? So, doon sa LMS, doon sa portal, uh, courses may be created, like, Kung subject nyo ay science, ikikreate doon sa portal. Sa LMS nyo yung science, subject, English, math. So, when you try to, if you wanted to upload resources in your science course, you are permitted to do so. If the student would be asking to access a subject in English, and that particular lesson or activity is in the portal, then they can also access that. So normally, yung LMS natin, depending on uh, whether our company would be uh, choosing any of those uh, platforms that I have discussed. So normally, uh, ang service provider natin that uh, the school would be considering would just be one provider. So this is uh, all subjects are already uh, created in that LMS, in that portal. Okay, my very ideal, paano kaya from Mateo Mendoza, very ideal po, paano kaya sa problem ay internet connection? So actually, kung there are two types kasi of online learning eh, or online teaching, yung asynchronous and synchronous. If you hope to consider yung synchronous, definitely you should have a very strong internet connection. Okay? But if you opted the asynchronous way, 
kung may problema man sa internet connection for a time, uh, the student would be given the opportunity to have it uh, access once he is permitted. Halimbawa, okay na yung connection niya. Uh, meron na siyang data na pwede niyang gamitin to access the portal. So, uh, it's just that you have to consider what particular type you would be considering, whether it is self-paced or instructor-led, depending on the connection concern of our students. But because our learning materials are already in the cloud, anytime they wish to have it accessed, they will always be able to access it. So, yung problem dito is yung tracking ng teacher. So, every now and then, the teacher would be able to track yung development, yung progress ng performance ng bata based on uh, their submission of certain outputs. Okay. Other question? How effective is e-learning? Uh, normally, it's, it's very effective. Okay. Although there are cases when a teacher, uh, when a teacher would want more or would want to consider face-to-face -face teaching rather than online. If you are technically inequipped, definitely you might not consider uh, online teaching effective. But if you know how to navigate the portal, you know how to uh, consider uploading materials and deployment of your lessons and so on and so forth, you would be able to find uh, online learning effective. Okay? Another concern is, may mga estudyante kasi tayo na they hate being given time, uh, yung, yung, we, we, we define a particular time that they would be able to accomplish this task. So if you would consider yung self-paced e-learning as an online platform, uh, the students probably would be motivated more to learn because you allow them to learn using their own pace. Any suggestion on how to implement uh, from, from, sorry, from Mike Guliman? Do you think that e-learning is possible to young learners, especially to the kindergarten learners? Any suggestion on how to implement online learning for the preschoolers? Uh, ang preschooler kasi, if, if you're going to consider the profile, or rather, the, 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 the preschoolers today, uh, they are what? They are also very adept in terms of the use of their mobile phones. They can navigate, they can explore. Okay, but it would work best, definitely it would work best if it is guided by an adult. Because definitely there are steps that they have to follow, okay? So, yung preschoolers kasi most of the time, ang gusto niyan laro, right? May mga applications tayo na pwedeng gamitin online na yung form or platform or yung presentation, yung technique na ginagamit or, yeah, in presenting the lesson are in a form of a game. So, in that way, it makes it effective to them. It's just that, there should be a supervision of an adult so that they get to consider an activity uh, which is advised. Do we still have time? So one more question. Wala uh, nang tanong? Meron pa po ba? Did I miss any question? So... Wala na po yatang tanong ngayon. Uh, okay. So I have another message received. Kumusta po pala kayo in time of uh, this pandemic? I hope everyone is safe. Everyone is healthy. Question. Wala na po? Okay. So, uh, let me share to you, Vibal is really very supportive 
uh, to this online undertaking. In fact, they were able to come up with their online or digital curriculum, which is called which is called uh, uh, Smart, which I have uh, I have uh, presented a while ago. What is this uh, VSmart for? Ito yung VSmart ay isang LMS na na-develop ng Vibal. And as I try to peruse on it, very, ano siya, very user-friendly. So you see some, the strengths of the VSmart school of Vibal, their LMS is, uh, it's user-friendly. Uh, you can customize also your learning. You can upload. You can add more, you can upload more videos. You can track student progress because there are uh, record sheets that is in place. So probably uh, those who would be interested to consider an LMS program for this time, you may just uh, consider Vibal's product, which is the VSmart School for Teachers. Vibal has also prepared a summer program for us. Where is that summer program? Let me check. So my summer program then po ang ating ang Vibal. Where is the summer program? The summer program is I'm I lost the page. What is that summer program for? Ayan. Ayan po yung summer program. If you still have ample time and if you wanted to be equipped so that uh, we are ready again in the opening in the coming school year, you may consider enrolling to the summer program of Vival. This is Vival summer program. Uh, you may just consider the slides, Vibal Summer Program enrollment is now open. So you will be given information when this summer program will be started. Okay, other concern? Other, other, no more questions. So if you may be having some questions about the presentation or about your digital certificates and other, other, other notes you wish Vibal would know, you may just, uh, consider the following contact numbers and email address of Vibal so that they will be informed of your concern. Okay, so as my parting word, I would just like to thank everyone. I know I have um, friends who are watching this webinar, who had attended this webinar. Actually, I'm not I, I was just silent about this activity because I just wanted to just deliver without them knowing it, but they were able to uh, know it and they are here supporting me. Thank you so much. My previous students are also around and I just wanted to say thank you for listening. And to all the participants, Sana, uh, during this pandemic, we still make our time productive. So as my parting word, may I just leave you this quote by Bob Talbert. Teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is best. Again, this is Marivic Ditaniedo, and thank you so much for patiently listening to my discussion. Thank you so much, Vival, for this opportunity.